Many of the most successful Scotch whiskey blends got their start in small family grocery stores um, and today still bear the name of the original family. Think of the Walkers, the Doers, the Chivases, the Bells, the Teachers. Ballantines is no different. George Ballantine Sr. opened up his shop in 1827, but it was his sons Archibald and George Jr. who became better known for blending and selling their own whiskey blends in the 1860s or 1870s. Ballantine's Finest first hit the shelves in 1910, and it was such a success that George Jr. was able to sell the company at a good price to Barclay and McKinley. The company was then sold to Hiram Walker, Gooder, Ham, and Warts in 1935. Hiram Walker then bought Milton Duff Distillery and Glen Burgie Distillery, and today those two malts are still two of the main ingredients in the Ballantine's blends. The company was then sold to Allied Domecq in 1987 and then on to Pernod Richard in 2005. Today, Ballantine's is the second best-selling scotch in the world behind only Johnny Walker. Though date information is limited on this bottle of Ballantine's 12-year-old blended scotch whiskey, let's give it a shot anyway. The bottle's strip is not an American tax strip, but a duty-free strip, so it has no date information. Also, the bottom of the bottle has no date information, so we're left with the front label. The alcohol content is listed in proof, not ABV. Thus, the bottle is from before 1990. The liquid volume is listed in imperial measurements, not metric, quarts rather than liters. So the whiskey is from before 1980. When Ballantine's 12 was first introduced in the 1960s, it had a different top of the label, which referenced the late Queen Victoria and King Edward. So I'm going to go with the 1970s. What I'm going to do this time is open up my bottle of Ballantine's 12-year-old from the 1970s, pour it into the glass, and let it open up for a few minutes. While it's opening up, I am going to pour samples of Ballantine's Finest from the 1970s and Ballantine's Finest from the 1990s so I can try them alongside this Ballantine's 12. Here it goes. Oh. Screw top. So this is Ballantine's Finest from the 1970s. I'm just going to pour that all over the table. And this is Ballantine's Finest from the 1990s. I'm actually going to start with the 1990s first. I'm going to switch. Ballantine's Finest, 1990s. A little dusty, a little papery, but there's definitely some white fruits going on. Apples and pears. It gets a little candied with time on the nose. So it's basically like a current cheap blend, but better. It's really hot, and the heat is all that registers at first. But then there is a little bit of sugar, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of bitterness. It has enough sweetness and a little bit of caramel. <clears throat> Once you get beneath the heat, it's inoffensive. It's approachable. Valentine's Finest from the 1970s. This may have oxidized a bit while it was in the sample bottle. Um, there's not a whole lot going on on the nose. Nutty and peppery, rice and oats a little bit of anise, and a little bit of this sugary candy note. There's not much left. There's a little bit of malt, there's a little bit of vanilla, but there's a bitterness to it that grows. And now, finally, the Ballantine's 12-year-old from the 1970s. The first thing I notice is butterscotch, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel, toasted grains, mint, malt, anise, Fernet Branca, a little bit of Old Spice cologne. It may be my imagination, but I'm getting hints of Oloroso casks. Like a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of nuts. Cheers. There is definitely sherry casks in here. Almond cookies, honey and raisins, dried pineapple, dried apricots, tart limes. I'm not getting peat or smoke per se, but there are definitely earthy and greasy notes in there that uh, read like old school whiskey. The finish has a good length. It's simple, but it's not bitter. It's not sour. 
It does have sort of a low rumble of toasted nuts and peppercorns, ginger, limes, some dried berries to conclude. My idea here was good. The result was not so great. The 1990s Ballantine's Finest is fine. It comes across as a whiskey that would go great on the rocks or with some club soda and a twist. The 1970s Ballantine's Finest has definitely oxidized in the three plus years it's been in the sample bottle. It's quite bitter and sour. It was better when I had first opened up the bottle, again, three years ago. The Ballantine's 12 is in fact the star of the show. It is the one whiskey of these three that drinks well, neat. There's a variety of casks. There's a variety of malts in there as well. I would not be shocked if this was 40 to 50% malt. One of the fun things about Older Ballantine's 12 is that it doesn't usually get expensive in international auctions because people don't get excited about Ballantine's 12. Papa. Sounds like my time is up.